What's up guys, Nick Fish here with Okuma Fishing, giving you five tips on how to be a better kayak angler in 2023. So let's get started. So number five is to have some nice warm clothing. I have these super nice wool socks here. These were sent to me by a subscriber. This sock has two layers. The outside is a regular sock, but the inside is made out of wool, which is really important when you're kayak fishing. So unlike cotton guys, wool stays warm even when wet. I think it can be soaked up to 40 or 80% without feeling wet. And when you're kayak fishing, the first thing to get cold is normally your hands and your feet. So if you have cotton socks, once they get wet, that heat is gonna get sucked out of you. And as far as shoes go, I like these by Cressy. I got these on Amazon. These are three millimeter neoprene booties or shoes. And I've gone through a lot of kayak shoes, guys. They get worn out pretty easy, as you can see kind of in this corner right here. It's kind of already getting worn out. Um, sometimes this front lip starts separating from the shoe. Um, I have a little wear and tear right here as well. But these are nice because they have a zipper on them. They're really easy to take on and off. Um, sometimes I don't even zip them up. But yeah, this is a good brand, Cressy. I got it on Amazon, um, whatever size you want, but they hold together really well. I do guiding as well as go fishing about 100 days out of the year, and these hold up pretty well. I would highly suggest them. And sticking with number five, which is good warm clothing, I have my jackets that I wear. I normally wear a t-shirt and a sweatshirt and maybe even two sweatshirts underneath this but this is what I wear 90% of the time in California. And this is the size large, and I'm about 5'8". It's a little big on me, but it's nice to have it a little big so that you can layer underneath it. So this is the Foul Weather Jacket by Okuma. It has Velcro on the sleeves. It's water resistant, so water will go through this eventually, but most days I don't even get wet. Just spray and everything, it's really good for that super nice zipper here for a good seal so water doesn't go inside wind doesn't go inside all my jackets have this cell phone pocket here this pocket is a must-have for your cell phone when you're fishing this is the best place for a phone in my opinion so the hood works well goes all the way up and then you can also cinch it down really tight right here and when it's cold, cinching it down like this really helps. The wind doesn't go in through your face and, oh man, it's cold sometimes. So being able to cinch down your wrists, cinch down your head a little bit, it can really make a big difference. Especially fishing out here, guys, in California, where the weather is so extreme, it can be really hot, it can be really cold um, in the same month. Being able to feel warm even on the cold days and being able to take off layers on the hot days is super important. So that brings me to my next jacket. Also, before I move on to the second jacket that I have, which is that extra 10% when it's really wet. So the next jacket I got is the Fisherman's Life jacket. You can get this at fishermanslife.net. This one is 100% waterproof. So on those 10% days when it's gonna be wet, um, I would definitely wear this. Now this doesn't have as much insulation as the Okuma jacket. The Fisherman's Life jacket has a nice sleeve on the inside and that prevents water from going up your wrists, which is so annoying and cold and gets your whole arm wet. I really like the hood on the Fisherman's Life jacket. It really comes down on your face here and you can cinch it up really tight. So that hole gets pretty small, but you can still see out of it super high quality zippers of course you got the phone pocket here but yeah this is a super nice jacket little more expensive than the okuma jacket but this is 100 percent waterproof so if you're looking to get wet this is a good option and these sizes run a little bit small guys this jacket is a small and it fits me pretty good i'm normally a medium so let's move on to tip number four so since it's 2023, I decided to get a new wetsuit. I probably go through one or two wetsuits a year. 
And this is a three millimeter NRS Farmer John wetsuit. Farmer John means it has no sleeve. Three millimeter means how thick it is, which three millimeter, four millimeter, that's pretty perfect for a California. And NRS is just the brand. This one is, yeah, the NRS 3.0 John wetsuit. These are really nice quality, but like I said, I go through one or two of these a season. The parts in my experience that wear down for these are the knees, because you're pedaling a lot, as well as the crotch area, um, the butt area, um, and these side seams here. But yeah, people ask me all the time, are wetsuits necessary to go on my guided trips? And that's no, but they are definitely safer and more comfortable. But it's not necessary, especially on lakes and inside the bay. All right guys, so tip number three is to stay organized on the kayak. And I have a couple items here that'll help you do that. And being organized on the kayak is super important for safety reasons as well as to help you maximize your time on the water. So here I have a foldable organizer by Plano. And the reason I like this is it's easy to wash and dry. And one side is a clear see-through plastic. The other side is a rubber mesh. So it's really easy to just spray down this whole thing like this and then just hang it up to dry. The clear plastic really helps so you can see everything that you have. You can use all the tackle that you bring. And all the stuff doesn't jiggle around in here, like if you had it in a tackle box. So depending on the season, um, whatever fish I'm guiding for, I change out the stuff in here. I bring jigs, I bring lures, I bring salmon gear, halibut gear, rockfish gear. I use this a lot, I really like this product. It's a little bit expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth it because it saves a lot of your gear from getting rusted and I really enjoy this product. So check this out. And the next thing on staying organized has to do with crab. Everybody knows that crab season started and that we have to use these hoop nets now, but I've been doing this for years and I've seen a couple people catch on here and there but nobody's really made a video on it, so I'm gonna do it here. So the way I organize my hoop nets is with this extension cord organizer here. And you can buy these at Home Depot. It's just a piece of plastic. It costs a couple dollars, but it makes your rope way more organized, makes it a lot easier, and in my opinion, a lot safer. If you're going lobster fishing, you can zip tie lights to it but this extension cord organizer can hold up to 150 feet of poly rope. And I like poly rope just cause it's lighter. And on the kayak, that makes a big difference when you're carrying this gear. When you're fishing for crab, it's a lot more work than just regular fishing. Sometimes you make a whole separate trip just to bring your traps. So minimizing the weight is really important for kayak fishing. If you go on the calm, calm days, then you don't even have to weight your traps and you can get away with it. But yeah, to finish off tip number four for organization is the extension cord organizer. Holds about 150 feet of rope. This is about 100 right here. So I put 100 feet of poly rope here and all I do is I have sliding buoys that I attach to it. And depending on the depth, this is how I do it. So I just keep letting out line, letting out line, letting out line until the trap hits the bottom. This buoy is going to float on top of the water. And as you let out line, the line is going to go through the buoy, but the buoy is going to stay in the same spot. It's not going to go down with the trap. So once the line stops going down the buoy, that means it hits the bottom and you can tie off your rope to this extension cord organizer. So the way I tie it off to make it real easy is I just loop it in my hand and I throw it over like this and I just tie it down. So as you can see, it just loops. It's not coming out. And then I just throw it over the side of my kayak. This buoy is gonna slide, 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 slide. 
until it gets to the end of the buoy and it's just gonna look like this on the top of the water. So that's tip number two, guys, not tip number four. And last but not least, my number one tip to help be a better kayak angler in 2023 is actually a fishing product. It's the Akuma Cold Water SS. And this is my favorite fishing product of the year. I use this for pretty much everything here in the Bay Area. Salmon, halibut, rockfish, rainbow trout. If I only had to have one reel, this would be it. As you guys know, I have a guide service here and this is the reel that I bought for all my rods for my guide service. Super smooth. Super smooth, huge line capacity here. You have a nice line counter here for fishing salmon. Super important for kayak fishing for salmon. You have a nice power handle here for fishing for halibut, pulling up link cods out of the rocks. Star drag, so it's really easy to make really fine tune changes. And the Akuma SS has 26 pounds of drag, which is crazy for a low profile reel like this. So you have a super big drag, big line capacity. This reel is perfect for 30 or 40 pound braid, which can catch any species here in California. It's thin enough to do freshwater stuff, but it's thick enough that if you get it stuck in some rocks, it's really hard to break off in a kayak. So if you guys are looking to step up your game, Cold Water SS, super smooth, really easy to use. Just boom, boom, line counter so you know exactly how far your lure is behind your kayak. A lot of the times on the kayak, we don't have downriggers, so that's super helpful. Power handle, so you get good grip on here. I love this reel. So this was my number one product for 2022 the Akuma Cold Water 354D. The SS, that stands for Stainless Steel Internals. And if you enjoyed this more informational video, guys, please comment below, like this video, and until next time, guys, I'll see you later.